Welcome to T2, day 26 of calculus. We're going to start off by finding the maximum value of a polynomial on a specific interval. So the maximum value of a polynomial on a specific interval. As we've done many times before, we are first going to attack this problem by finding the derivative of the function we are trying to find the maximum of. So if you do the derivative of this, you end up with 6x squared plus 6x minus 36. And we continue by setting it equal to zero because we want to know where the maximum occurs. And when you factor out a six, you end up with x squared plus x minus six. So you end up with zero is equal to six times x plus three times x minus two. And we continue on with the momentum we've generated and use a sign diagram to figure out which one's a min and which one's a max. Maybe one's a min, maybe one's a max, but we need a sign diagram to figure that out. So when we do that, when we do that, we have three regions here. We have three regions, and when you plug values in to find out if it, is it falling or decreasing, you can look at the derivative here. You can also look at the simplified one. You really just need the sign of this. You find out that the function is indeed <coughs> rising here, and then falling, and then rising. So what does this function look like? It's going up, and then down, and then up. But we didn't use this information yet. What happens here? It tells us that this function stops at negative 5 and stops at 5. So at negative 5, it stops here, and it stops here at 5. We know that this right here, where x is equal to negative 3, this is going to be a local max. And this is definitely, right here, when x is negative 2, going to be a local min. But we need to know how high these points are here and here. If we're looking for the max, there's only two places where the global max, the highest possible points, can be. And we'll call that point A, and we'll call that point B. Could happen at the local max or here. You know, this could be a little, like B, we don't know if B is going to end up above or below A until we plug it into the original function. The original function is right there. And when you plug negative 3 in, you find out that it's negative 387. That's what this point is. And over here, you find out that it's 5151. So this one is therefore the global max because 151 is greater than 87. So to answer this question, what is the maximum value on that interval? The max value of f of x on the interval negative 5 to 5 is 151. That's the highest it can go. The key takeaway here is that you need to check your critical points, which are here and here, but you also need to test, and you also need to test your endpoints. You also need to test your endpoints. So test your endpoints if you're looking for global mins and maxes. So now we have 2,000 feet of fencing and we're making two circles. We're making circle one and we're making circle two out of that one section of 2,000 feet of fencing. And it tells you this one has to have a max a minimum of 1,200 pi square feet inside. And this one, the area has to be greater than 600 pi square feet. We find that in the problem. And it also tells you that the radius for this circle, we're going to call it x, and the radius for this circle, we're going to call it y. So it tells us that, first, we have 2,000 feet of fencing. The fencing goes all the way around. This is key to realize right here. So all the way around means the circumference. The circumference of this circle is 2 pi times the, sorry, pi times the diameter. So it's 2 pi times the radius, which is x. The circumference over here, you see 2, is going to be 2 pi y, pi times the diameter, and the diameter is 2 times y. We also know that the area of this one is pi times x squared, and the area of this one is pi times y squared. Well, we have 2,000 feet of fencing, so we know that c1 plus c2 is equal to 2,000, but we have, we have equations for c1 and c2, so 2 pi x plus 2 pi y is equal to 2,000. So this is the summary of the question so far. Let's see if we can suss out some relationships. We also therefore know from here that we can divide by 2. Pi x plus pi y is equal to 1,000. So therefore, pi y is equal to 1,000 minus pi x. Divide both sides by pi, and you get y is equal to 1,000 over pi minus x. So this is important, we have a relationship here. 
Now, before we go any further, let's remember what we had before. We had endpoints here. We had an interval from negative 5 to 5. We have something similar going on here. We have something similar going on here because we have 2,000 feet of fencing. All of it can't go here and all of it can't go there. You have to have at least a certain area in each case. So what does that tell you? It tells you that pi times x squared has to be greater than or equal to 1200 pi because the area has to be at least 1200 pi. So that tells us that x squared has to be at least 1200. So x has to be at least this. So that's the smallest value x can take right here. This is the smallest value x can take. x has to be greater than this. So that's the min value for x. What about the max? Well, we'd want to find out, we can't just put all of x here. We can't just put all the fencing here because there has to be at least 600 pi feet squared over here in the y. So that means that pi y squared has to be at least 600 pi. Well, that tells us that y squared has to be greater than or equal to 600. So y has to be greater than or equal to the square root of 600. So if that's the min, y has to be greater than or equal to 600, we have to figure out what does that mean about the max for x. The key thing to realize here is x and y are radii, radii. And we have a relationship here, y is equal to 1000 over pi minus x. So the min y, again, was equal to the square root of 600. So if y is minimized, that means x is maximized. So you take this and plug it in there and you end up with the maximum, excuse me, you plug it in to right there. So what does that tell you? It tells us that the square root of 600 equals 1000 over pi minus x. This would be the biggest value x can be. So what does that mean? It means that x is going to be equal to 1000 over pi minus the square root of 600. This is the max x can be, max value of x, because this is the minimum value of y. Length of fencing is either going to the circle 1 or circle 2, so if, x, if y is minimized, x is maximized. So we now need to do some calculus. We have a domain restriction, though, which is that x has to be less than or equal to 1,000 over pi minus square root of 600, and it has to be greater than the square root of 1,200. So we have a domain restriction. This is super important. So now let's do calculus, which is what we're going to need to answer the question, which is the max, what is the maximum possible area? Well, the max area is adding together these two area functions right here and right here. So the area total, the area total is going to be pi x squared plus pi y squared. We can't really work with that though because we need one variable. But we do know y is equal to 1000, 1000 over pi minus x. So a total is therefore equal to pi x squared plus, we take this and we march it in right there, plus pi times 1000 over pi minus x, and that's squared. Now we're trying to maximize that, and it's one variable, so hey, we can take the derivative. So a prime is going to be 2x times pi plus, we bring the 2 to the front, 2 pi times 1000 over pi minus x to the first. Now, because of the chain rule, we need the derivative of the inside, which is negative 1. So if we clean it up a little bit, a prime in terms of x is 2x pi plus, oh, it's going to be minus because that minus on the other side, minus 2 pi times 1000 over pi minus x. As we've done before, we set this equal to 0 which is kind of helpful because then we can divide both sides by 2 pi. And if we divide both sides by 2 pi, we end up with 0 equals x minus 1,000 over pi minus x. Remember, the negative will distribute here to both of these. So end up with 0 is equal to 2x minus 1,000 over pi. So that means that 1,000 over pi is equal to 2x. Divide both sides by 2, you get x is equal to 500 over pi. So now we have to do a sine diagram. And if you do a sine diagram here, the middle value will be 500 over pi. And this is an x value, and you have a prime. Remember, the lowest value x can be is right over here, square root of 1,200. So you have the square root of 1,200 right there. And over here, the maximum value is 
uh, what did we say it was? 1,000 over pi minus the square root, 1,000 over pi minus the square root of 600. What you find when you do the sine diagram, remember you're doing a sine diagram here, you're doing a sine diagram here. These values are just where you stop evaluating. You find out that this is all negative, it's going down like this, and then it's zero, and then it's, it's go, excuse me, it's going down first, so it's negative, 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 negative. And then what happens to it? Well, it goes up, it goes up, it turns into positive. So the function itself goes down and then up, meaning this is a minimum. So you really need to know, I'll make this a little cleaner here, so you know the function is decreasing and then increasing. This is a minimum. You need to test the endpoints because the maximum will occur either here or here. Here or there, so you have point A and you have point B. When you use your calculator and you plug, you need to find the actual value there. So you plug it into the area function and that area function is right up here. That area function is right here. You need your calculator for it. When you plug it in, you find out when x is the square root of 1200, the output is gonna be 35.64. That's for this point right there, A. And then point B, when you plug in 1,000 over pi minus the square root of 600, uh, you end up, excuse me, the, the square root of 1,200 is 30, 34.6. But when x is the square root of 1,200, the output of the function is 256,632. And over here, when you plug in this value right there, you end up with 273,065. And you can just do this. You know it's gonna be smaller than A, but if you plug in the middle value, which is uh, 500 over pi is 159.2, you end up with 159,155. So that matches, it starts there, it goes down to there, and then it goes up. So what's the maximum overall? The maximum overall is right there. So what's the total max area? Well, there it is right there because it happens right here. It happens right there. So if you didn't test the endpoints, you'd get to here and be confused because that's a minimum. So you must test the endpoints. You must test.